This video describes the function 1 over z, which is actually a rather interesting function. So, what does it do? Well, it transforms the complex plane into the complex plane. But, what about the origin? 1 over z with z equals 0 could be a potential problem. Let's hold off on that a moment. And let me first start by noting that the inverse of 1 over z is 1 over w. So whatever 1 over z does, its inverse does the opposite. That's sort of obvious, but it's actually very clear in this case. So there's a little bit of a nice thing to think about. If we have z over here, and we go with 1 over z, to go to w, or we go the other way, with its inverse, what happens? Well, first of all, you will notice if z in magnitude is equal to 1, 1 over z also is equal to magnitude of 1. This means that the unit circle gets turned into the unit circle. And in, that's actually true for any circle that does not intersect the origin. So a circle not passing through the origin gets turned into a circle not passing through the origin. And, of course, the inverse goes the other way. Now, what about something that, <clears throat> a circle that does pass through the origin? Well, it's going to hit into the origin. Z equals 0. And what's a 1 over 0? Well, 1 over 0 is not a number, it's a limit. But we can add in infinity as an additional point. And then we end up with that circle that was passing through the origin now goes to infinity in the w side. And in fact, here's how it works. A circle passing through z equals 0 gets transformed into a line. And that line, well, what, what happens to it? That circle passing through the origin transforms into a line not passing through the origin here. And of course, what, what does that mean in the inverse? If I have a line not passing through the origin, it will get turned into a circle passing through the origin. So let's just Copy paste that over to here. With one change, that being that the W's and Z's switch roles. Well, that's kind of interesting. So lines not passing through the origin get turned into circles that do pass through the origin. Now, what about lines that do pass through the origin? Well, they, they don't get changed. So a line
So in essence, that's, that's kind of what's going on between z and w with 1 over z. As circles get turned into circles or lines, lines and circles kind of get mixed up. This seems a bit mysterious. There's a nice interpretation of this, not in terms of the complex plane, but in terms of the Riemann sphere. So the interpretation is, instead of imagining points on the plane, we've got this z equals 0 issue. And when I divide by 0, it goes off to infinity. That's generally thought of as a limit. Imagine taking all of that. All of that goes to infinity. So let's take C, the complex plane, and let's attach onto it a point at infinity. When we do that, we end up with a picture that's a sphere. Kind of conventionally, let's put z equals 0 at the south pole. And at the north pole, now that's where our new infinity point lies. And so let's draw some pictures on this. This, this thing is called the Riemann sphere. Let's draw some pictures on that. So for instance, if I were to draw for you the unit circle, that appears somewhere as a circle here. It doesn't touch the origin. And at least qualitatively, you could imagine it being right here, the equator. And precise qualitative is topological. Now you should notice that points that are inside the sphere then are in the or inside the circle, unit circle, are in the southern hemisphere. Points outside are in the northern hemisphere. Notice too, if I draw a line that goes through the origin like this. It touches both the origin and the point at infinity. Oh, well, it really then is a circle that goes all the way around the Riemann sphere. If I draw some other line that, say, doesn't go through the origin. Well, it's still a line, right? It doesn't go through the origin. It's still a line. So it doesn't actually go off to infinity, right? So that means it goes through the point at infinity, but doesn't actually hit the origin. So let's see here. Where would that go? Probably something like this. Something like that. Another circle that kind of loops around in some other way. And so actually the, the, the takeaway is that on the Riemann sphere, lines are circles. Now that gets us in a good place where we can talk about what 1 over z does. So let me show you two copies of the Riemann sphere. What, what 1 over z does is it takes this copy of the Riemann sphere and it flips it. So now this is the Riemann sphere for W. But now you will notice 1 over 0 is infinity.
And of course, 1 over infinity then is 0. The equator, the unit circle, is fixed, but it's flipped over. In fact, let me draw this a little differently. that. So the whole thing gets flipped over. And in particular, the orientation of that equator gets flipped. So this is w equals f of z is 1 over z. So that's what happens. And so that's why circles get turned into lines and lines get turned into circles, because actually in the Riemann sphere, they're just moving around circles. They're not actually getting turned into lines or whatnot. Now, to finish this off, let's give a little bit of a calculation. Oh, by the way, if I were to do this flipping process twice, of course, I get back to the original sphere. That's actually an interpretation of 1 over z being its own inverse. OK, so now some calculations. Let z be x plus i y. Let w be u plus i v. And so, 1 over z, 1 over x plus i y. Of course, I can rationalize my denominator. Similarly for W. OK. Now here's a trick. And this is a trick that goes all the way back to pre-calculus, is that any circle or line in R2 is a conic section, and so satisfies an equation that looks like this. OK, so a conic section, of course, satisfies any kind of quadratic formula like this. But this is a specific one because you'll notice the a right there is on both the u squared and the v squared. That makes it either a circle. If I want a circle, I make a not 0. If I want a line, I make a equal to 0. If I want it to go through the origin, I make d equal to 0. And if I don't, I make d not equal to 0. So circle, if a not equal to 0. Line otherwise, and passing through w equal to 0 if d is equal to 0. OK, so that's kind of convenient. So now we're going to do some algebra on this formula right here, making use of the formulas we just computed above, where we note that this thing is u and this thing is v. So we're going to make use of all of those formulas. And it's just a little bit of algebra now.
So we're going to use that, and now we're going to substitute. Okay, so we're going to make that substitution. A little bit of simplification can be done with the A. But the rest of this is the same. And that simplifies nicely. which is actually exactly the same kind of formula we started with. So that means that a circle or line thing indeed gets transformed into a circle or line, just as I claimed at the beginning of this video.